There we go. Hello, everyone. Everyone on Zoom, live, joining us. Um, thank you for coming to our first Film 24 coaching session. Say hello. Um, so we are really excited to be here. Um, we started Black Lives Matter. Thank you for having me. But we started Black Lives Matter because um, as serial entrepreneurs, we saw the need um, to try to figure it out. Right. Um, we always say that we had uh, questions and trials, and we wanted to make sure that after we learn from our, our trials, we can help others learn as well. So that's why we are here to help you all learn. If you all have any questions, please interact. With this is a live, live, live coaching session. We're doing it also with our success plug team as well. They're plugged in um, today. So um, I'm going to bring up the mastermind, the creator, our coach, Terrence Blackwell. Yay! Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, thank you, guys, for being here today. I appreciate you guys uh, for being here. Um, hopefully, we'll learn something today that you guys can um, use and benefit from. Um, everyone is on Zoom. Um, if you have questions, just put in the chat like we always do. This is a traditional um, training session. Um, so we typically do these training sessions every Wednesday at 6.30 um, for other business owners that are trying to learn and grow as well. Um, so thank you again, Brittany, uh, over in Dale for, you know, for, for all of that. Um, I appreciate it. It's, de it's definitely not easy, but you made it easier. So I definitely appreciate it. All right, so let me get into it, guys. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to do was um, I wanted to study like what makes businesses successful, why some businesses thrive, some businesses don't thrive. Of course, everyone knows the stats of uh, businesses that go out of business um, just because, um, you know, whatever the reason is, right? So what I wanted to do was I wanted to diagnose what works and what kind of doesn't work. So um, just on a micro level, we're going to talk about a few things that we can apply today. Now, I've taught this lesson before. It's just it's such an amazing lesson because it's so simple. And what I've, um, what I've done was I've looked at, it's essentially four ways or four things that we have to do to make sure that we are able to grow our business, okay? So that's what we're going to be talking about today, how to grow your business. Any questions, you stop me, okay? All right, so we're going to be talking about the um, four things. I'm not even going over all four today. Um, today I'm only going to focus on one, which I think is, uh, I'm not going to say it's the most important, but it's the most important for right now today. So the first thing we're going to talk about is going to be um, leads. Can you guys see that on the camera? On Zoom? Hey, yeah, sure. I'll write that one more. I'll write that one. So, So number one is going to be leads. And two is going to be conversions. Number three is going to be transactions. And then we're going to talk about profits. Okay. All right, so um, we're only going to talk about one of these today. Um, just, just for time's sake, we're only going to talk about one. But um, um, anybody in the chat, maybe, um, tell me, how would you um, define leads? All right, so this is how we're going to define leads. Leads are um, potential prospects that fit into your, talk, your target audience of people that you potentially sell to at some point, right? So leads can be um, people who, but actually people that's interested in your service. So everyone isn't a, a potential lead, um, or if it is, it's just a bad lead, okay? So we want to make sure that we're talking to the right people, um, because if not, we're just kind of wasting our time and also our money. Today, what we're going to focus on is um, only, we're going to focus on leads today, okay? 
Now, the reason why this is going to be the most important for today is because essentially without leads, you know, without traffic, we can't do the other thing, right? So that's going to be the, the foundation to whatever we do in the world. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you guys um, about five or six um, things that you can do to get more leads, or at least put yourself in a best position to get leads. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do is um, optimize the website. Just optimize your website. So why is this important? If you look at your website, your, your website is typically the first thing that people see when they're interested in you or your service, right? So imagine if someone uh, looked at your website and they immediately said, I'm not interested, right? And what typically happens is because web websites can be so expensive, we take so much time or, or, or we just take, we, we try to uh, take the easy route by not spending the money that we need to or not spending the time to make it the most appealing um, for our, our customers, right? And then, um, so, so number one is gonna be optimizing the website. So the few things that you can look at um, when you're creating a website, the first thing is gonna be a headline. So when you look at your headline, the headline should, I should be able to tell within a few seconds, what is it that you do, right? So if I go to your website and your website is talking about some type of affirmation or whatever, some talk is not, not even relevant to the customer that you're looking for, then you, I can always tell you that you're losing customers because you don't have an optimized website just based on your headline, right? So a good headline should tell me exactly who's my customer and what is it that I can do for them. Okay, so if it's a fitness program, and let's say your fitness program is um, for dads who now have dad buys, you know, parents that have dad buys, right? So the headline should say something like, hey, are you tired of struggling with having a dad buy but you don't have the time as you to, right? That's a headline that will attract someone who is a dad who wants to lose the dad buy, right? So you want to make sure that your headline is the first thing that's going to be optimized. The next thing is going to be um, you want to have um, some type of, you want to have engagement, right? So you want to do something that's engaging. So a few things, two things, I'm going to give you an example. Um, one is going to be a pop-up. And some people say pop-ups don't work, they, they do work. And the other one is going to be a, a legit video. Okay? Now, you can do both. Now, a pop-up. The purpose of a pop-up, and every, I'm sure everybody's seen this, you go to someone's website, on the website says, hey, for 15% off, um, give me your name and number, right? It's a pop-up. And you give them your information, you're now directed to an email blast, they email you a million times a year, um, and, 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 and you go from there, right? The benefit of that is they've now captured your information and they now have a better opportunity to sell you, right? So as a result, you want to make sure that you have a pop-up as well because that is the data that you need because everyone isn't going to buy today. But if they don't buy today, how can I get back in contact with you, okay? Now, the next thing is going to be a website. I'm sorry, a video. So the, the benefit of having a video is what? It explains what it is that you do, who you are, and you tell people exactly what it is you want to do, right? Hey, my name is Terrence. Thank you so much for visiting this website. If you're interested in losing the dad bod, click below for a free 15 minute consultation um, where we can give you a step by step, a uh, step by step guide to get out um, to get back in shape. Boom. Right now, what does that do? That tells the, the, the client exactly what you want them to do. It also has something called a CTA, which is your call to action. That tells them exactly what you want them to do. You also capture the information, their email address, okay? Cool. All right, so that's your, your website. So make sure your website is, is, um, is optimized. Now, 
You want to do um, another thing that you want to look at when looking at your website is you want to make sure your website is um, up to speed as far as loading, right? So a few minutes ago, I was talking to um, I was talking to to Brittany. I was saying, um, man, I got to get off of the Wi-Fi because things are loading slower, right? As soon as I turned off the Wi-Fi, things started to load faster, right? But imagine if that's your website that's loading slow. People will say, ah, I don't feel like going to this today. I'm going to go to it later, whatever, because it's loading slow. So if your website is loading slow, you can go to, um, this is a free resource. It's SAO Op Timer. I'm going to write it down too. So free resource that you can use, and it pretty much is going to tell you the health of your website. Um, see if it's fast, if you know if things you can do, um, how well it can rank, stuff like that. Okay, so that's a that's a good resource that you can use. Another thing that you want to look at when we talk about your website is I'm gonna go through. I realize I'm saying this for longer than I should probably, but um, how like so you want to make sure that your website is optimized from an aspect of um SEO. So when you create your website, each page should have something called meta descriptions, keywords, um, tags. Make sure that you have things that help you rank as well when it comes to SEO. And SEO is search engine optimization. Essentially, what that means is um, if I search uh, Toyota right now, I'm going to get to the best Toyota dealerships in the area. Okay? Then you want to monitor and analyze the data. How many people are visiting your website every month? Um, how many people are converted to clients? How many people are clicking off? Um, how, many, how long do people stand on my website? These are all good things that you want to know and understand about your website. So make sure these things are things that you're tracking as well, okay? So number one is website. Um, number two, you want to leverage your social media. Now, social media is one of those ones that can um, take up a lot of time, but you want to make sure that you're being smart about social media. So you can create a post, um, take a day to create a post for the week, you know, if you want to create posts for the month, however you want to do it, but do that so that you're able to not focus on um, excuse me, creating posts every single day so you don't get bogged down into the the nuances of trying to figure out what to post, when to post, how to post, and all that. Okay. Um, another thing you want to look at is influencer marketing. So if you find people who are in your industry that has a, an audience, guess what? Like you should you should at least I'm not saying still you can't steal the audience, you know, the the audience, but you can figure out ways to partner with them because they have a bigger audience. Um, you can do, you know, if you have a podcast, you can go on their podcast or have your own podcast or you can interview them. Um, these are all different things you can do. Affiliate marketing, someone who has like, uh, who does like marketing for, for other businesses, you can do that for your company where people will advertise your business. You pay them a commission based on, you know, if someone buys. So all of that are things that you can do in regards to social media. Another thing that you should be doing on a consistent basis is contest for giveaways, right? Um, so if, if you're not doing that now, it's something that you can do. And what it does is it gets the, inc the excitement up and also gets people to know exactly who you are, right? So if you do a contest that says, um, I'm giving away a free uh, 40, uh, uh, 85 inch TV, now uh, all you have to do is put in your information. Guess what? People are gonna put in their information because they, they want to win this 85 inch TV. So it's the same, it's the same thought pattern that you can use in your business too to really get um to get uh, a, a notoriety of okay. Um, again, optimize your profile. So if I go to your your, your Instagram or, or your social media, it should say what you do, right? So Terrence Blackwell, business coach, revenue coach, whatever, right? You want to have that in the headline so when someone looks you up, they can know exactly what it is that you're doing. Uh, also, it should say. If you have a website, links should be there for your website. Talk about who you talk to audience is. All of those are things you might have in your, in your profile so that people can know exactly 
as soon as they click on, I um, know exactly who, who you are and who you're trying to help. Okay. Um, and then again, like also same thing, analytics. So everything should be tracked. So a lot of times when we're looking at getting leads, we're looking at um, how can we put ourselves in the best position to see what's working, see what's not working, so that we can um, just get better, right? So the way that you get better is by tracking. So with your social media, look at your insights. Look how many people visit your social media profile, how many people click the links, um, stuff like that. And now you can see what's working, what's not working. Look at how a post performs on the post and another post and, or, or, and hashtags and see, you know, if you can make adjustments, make changes, whatever. Um, I always recommend, you know, if you're if you post, let's say three times a week, um, see which see which hashtags work best. See if long captions work better or short captions. Just test everything until you see, you know, how it works, and then you can move on. Okay. All right. So that's um leverage social media. All right. Now, now that we have um we've optimized our website. We love social media. The next thing that we want to look at is email marketing, right? Because once you have marketed these people, some of them are going to say, yes, I'm interested. Some of them are going to say, I'm not interested right now, right? So you want to be able to um, email or, or market to these people through email um, so that you can get them to buy down the road. Now, if anybody says email marketing doesn't work, they're completely wrong. Email marketing still works. People still open up their emails, um, and it's very effective, okay? So when you look at email marketing, you want to look at, of course, your subject lines. You want to look at the content, how, how it's distributed. But then you also want to look at um, how can I make sure that people open up my emails, right? So that's just being conscious of what you're saying, what you're posting. Don't, you know, don't scam people. Don't say uh, free, uh, here's $100 as a subject line if you're not physically giving them $100, right? Um, or if you do explain what you, you know, what the point you're trying to make, trust me, you will lose people if you do it. <laughs> and, you know, people don't take it, take it as um, serious. You know, people take it serious, okay? Um, with your email marketing, um, you want to segment your list. So you're going to have some people that are bought, People that are bought should not be in the same category as people who have not bought yet, right? Because you're going to talk to those people a little bit different than you're going to talk to people that have already bought. Make sense? So now, once you have a segmented your list, you want to look at um, how can I send engaging emails? So one of the things that I, I like to do is I like to use personalization, right? So I look at emails almost as if I'm having a conversation. So if I'm having a conversation, I'm going to use your name, right? So it doesn't make sense if, I, if I'm if i doing emails to not use your name, right? Because, you know, now you think, I, you don't want to have, you can, I, can, I can't tell you um, how many emails I get per week. People responding directly to me because they, they think I'm actually sending them an email directly. Like, they're the only one that's getting the email. And that's, it's funny. Um, but it's cool. So you want to make sure that you can um, send emails that are engaging because you, you want people talking back, right? Sometimes you send an email, it's a simple one question, right? Hey, um, how's your how's your month been? How's your week going, right? And get people to engage. That 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 opens up that um conversation. For now, if you have a product to sell, if you have a, something to offer, then you can offer that because now you're in an engaged conversation. Does that make sense? The next thing is you want to have email automation, right? So email automation um, is going to be very important. So the email automation can be if you have a um, a a, um, a form that you've created, right? We have someone signs up for a freebie or something like that. Now that from, from that form it goes to the form to um to, to your email to an email list that you tag. And now we can continue to email these people over a period of time. Now, what you can do is create a workflow where you're sending them a series of emails or sequence of emails so that you can build up that relationship, right? So one can be 
um, introduction. Hey, my name is Terrence. This is who I am. This is what I do. Um, the second email could be um, it's an engaging email. Hey, tell me a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Um, three can be um, this is the service that I offer, or tell a story that can benefit them. Um, and, and then maybe by email five or six, you make an offer to sell them a product or or get them into a freebie, a webinar, or seminar, or something like that. Okay. So um, that is so important because you want to build up that relationship. So your welcome sequence is going to be important for you to build up that relationship so they can start to know who you are, but then also so you can get to know them as well. Okay. So uh, automations is important. The good thing about it, once you create, once you create an automation uh, or, or sequence, you only have to do it one time. And once you've done it that one time, it just runs and you never have to worry about it again. Okay. And then you want to test not the model. So again, um, test everything, everything you possibly can test it. So with your emails, you want to test, like right? so you want to look at, maybe you can gamify it too. So if you have like a low open rate, like if your open rate is like five, ten percent, then look at what am I doing wrong um, to get you know get more people to open up. Um, I also you can do things like um, change the subject line, send the same email, change the subject line, especially if it's a really good email. Um, resend it. You can send it to people who didn't open it. Um, that that's something that that, that I do sometimes, um, and that increases the overall um, open rate of the of the uh, email. So I try to stay around um, about 38 to about 43%, it's, it's a pretty good open rate. And the reason why that's, that's important is because that tells me that if I send out an email, the majority of my list is gonna see it, right? And if it's, a, if it's an offer to sell something, that means I have a higher probability of selling that thing because I now have an email list. Now, what I've created is a community and atmosphere where we don't sell a lot. Like we, we don't we don't put out a lot of offers, right? So with that being stated, most of my emails are educational, right? So I'm sitting, I'm putting out things that people can benefit from, opposed to hey, here's something to buy, right? And what that does is that gets people in the mindset that okay, he's he's really going to help me if I pay for the service. Right, and that's that's a mindset you can have as well, depending on what you're offering. Okay, so we have um, optimize your website, leverage social media, um, email marketing. The next one is going to be content marketing. Okay, so content marketing is um, similar. I can almost um, I can almost group it with social media, and also email marketing. Content marketing is really just having a plan um, with your social media or the content that you put out that you can get people to engage. It's really it's a real, um, it's, it's a real um, strategy to you, right? So you can do this with, um, if you use Facebook and Instagram, uh, Facebook's probably the, the easiest. Um, so you want to create an atmosphere where you're, Connected with an audience, right? So you need to build an audience or just have a, a following of people and um, create content that's centered around uh, whatever it is to talk about. So, for an example, um, if you, uh, if, if you're okay, for an example, I follow a guy who's a, a jet salesman, right? Um, so, he is like the number one guy in America who sells jets, right? So, this guy. His content all day is him, like with nice suit on, nice watch, nice shoes. Um, he's an older Italian guy. He's walking um, to his office. He has a crazy office. He's walking to his office. Somebody's opening up the doors. Somebody's handing him a drink when he comes to his office. He's sitting down. He's on the phone. He's doing deals. You can see all that, right? The benefit of that is you're like, man, I don't know what this guy does, but I I would like I would love him real number one, right? So you know, what that does is that helps build that engagement in that audience for people to know, okay, this is this is cool. This guy, you know, he, he's he's on he's on it every single day. So that's an example of content marketing. Now, with content marketing, you want to make sure that you're able to capitalize on the engagement, right? So what does that mean? 
So if you're getting eyeballs, people who are saying, yes, I'm interested in what you're doing, then you want to make sure that you can get them from, I'm interested, to, hey, I think I'm ready to buy. Okay? So you want to use something called, I said, I think I said it earlier, but um, CTA, right? So CTA is a call to action. A call to action is this a professional term of tell them what to do, right? Like just tell them what to do. So if, if you put out some content and you're talking about um, buying a jet then, or educating about different jets or packages, then guess what? At the, at, in your caption or in, in your actual content, say, click the link below, schedule a consultation. Um, call me now for uh, a, a walk around or a tour, right? Those are all different examples of call to actions that you can get people to move to the next stage of the sales process, okay? Another thing within content marketing is be consistent. So you create your own modem, modem and within that, you want to you make sure that you're able to stay consistent within that, your own frequency, right? So if it's once a month, if it's you know once every two months, whatever, just be consistent within that. And now you're able to um, build an audience up around that. So something that, so I had a, um, a podcast interview yesterday and the guy was saying that he's, he's um, recorded so far about 13 interviews that he has to put out. He said, yeah, you know, I'm going to post every Tuesday and Thursday. But guess what? He's able to post every Tuesday and Thursday because now he has in his ball 13 interviews he's already done. Right. So if you post something from these 13 interviews, guess what? People, you know, people are going to start to see, okay, at 6 30 on Tuesday and Thursday, um, this person posts. So I'm looking forward to it. Right. Another example um, is me and Country Wayne. Country Wayne, Country Wayne is creating an, an audience on Facebook um, that I, it should be studied. Like, you know, if you're really trying to grow a brand, grow a business, you have to study what he's done. If you look at what he's created, he is almost like his own television series. He actually has a television business uh, series on Facebook, right? So, and it's almost like a soap opera. And now, because this guy's so big, he's branched off, and he has other comedians under him that are, you know, having their own shows, right? So you want to think about it, you're marketing from the same um, scenario. You being that consistent, proposing any you know, great content, where people are starting to like, you know, actually look forward to it. Okay. The next one is going to be networking, do it for us. I need a taller, uh, taller board. All right. So, um, Networking and referrals. So this is going to be important. So you want you want to put yourself in a position where you can um, let other people know what it is you do. So a great example is if you are um, in the chamber of commerce, right? Uh, and you're able to build relationships there, and you find people who can who um, can benefit from what you do, or have a similar audience to you, right? So if I'm a baker. And um, someone else does, um, let's say, um, catering. Guess what? We're, we're a good mix. We do two different things, but we have a similar audience that we can connect on, right? So that's somebody that I would connect with, where we can do events together. I can say, hey, look, I'm going to host an event for my, my audience, my, my people. You come over, speak at my event. I will speak at your event. Like, these are just different things you can do. So that you're able to get people seeking leads on a consistent basis. Now, if you want to take it up a notch, you can say, hey, look, um, I'm gonna give you 50 bucks, 100 bucks um, per lead. Here's, here, you know, it's a good faith, here's 50 bucks, here's 100 bucks to get to get it started, right? And imagine if, you know, you had somebody that, you know, they were sending you leads on a consistent basis and you were just paying them for that lead, you know, because you know that you're gonna get a sale out of it, okay? Um, so that's what you want to look at. How, how can I put myself in that position where people are sending, sending leads and we're my business 
based on me doing a good job for somebody else or um, someone else's audience. Okay. So that's how networking networking and um, referrals is going to go. Now, another thing that you can do is uh, under referrals is create an actual referral incentive, right? So imagine if you sit down today and you want to do um, all of your clients, right? So say you have 100 clients, right? Let me do math for you guys. You sit down, you had a list of, say, 100 of your clients that you serve, right? And let's just say out of that 100, 20 of them are like really good customers, right? The ideal customer, you enjoy working with them. You know, you invite them to a family dinner or, or a family event or something like that, okay? Let's just say. So you cut that down from 20, I mean, 120. And let's say you make a proposition to those 20 people. You call them up. Hey, look, you know, I really appreciate you working with you. Um, you, you are amazing. You know, I, 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 you know, I really enjoy it. I would work with you again, you know, if you, if you ever needed me. And um, listen, what I'm trying to do is I'm in the process of growing our company in 2024, right? And I wanted to know if you would help me out. And um, you go to them and say, listen, what I'm going to do is, I, all I need you to do is reach out to your people. If you can send out, you know, an invite to about, you know, at least five and five and ten people that you know from your contacts, and let them know that I'm going to be giving them a call. Um, you know, talk about my service, right? Or, or just send them, send them to your link, whatever, right? You do this. So let's say twenty people do that to five or ten people. That's what that gets you back to hundred, right? One hundred, hundred. No, two thousand, right? I said ten. Said 20, five people. 20 people reach out to each other, five to 10, 2,000. 200. 200. Right? That's 200. So that's now 200 people that, sorry, my math is wrong. Um, so now 200 people, I haven't been able to count as good as I, you know, when time I used to be way through, I can just, you know, I don't know, whatever. All right. So uh, five to 10 people, this is the first time you're old, okay. Um, Five to ten people that that you reach out to from, from your good your, your good client list, right? So now you have a pool of potentially two hundred people that you can pitch your service to, right? Now let's say um, we're not going to say fifty percent. Let's say you know let's say ten ten percent of this actually buy, right? Ten percent that, that we go back to twenty, right? So twenty people actually buy your your, your product or service. And let's say your product is, is 500 bucks. Is that 10 dollars Yes. Okay. That's 10K that you make. I'm, I'm right beside you because I'm looking at dollars. So from a referral program that you literally just kind of put together on whim, um, it can be special. If let's say let's say if you have a, a product that's Hundred dollars, I mean a thousand dollars or eight hundred dollars, but you said I'm gonna, I want to, you know, just boost my income really quick. You know, you go to your, your audience and they send it, they, you know, they get twenty people to buy. That's a quick ten thousand dollars just off of a referral incentive, right? A one-time referral incentive. You can do that on a consistent basis, but if you're intentional about it by calling, you know, your audience, actually talking to your audience. Um, letting them know, listen, I'm trying to grow my business. Um, you know, I just need your help. You know, you, you, you were great to me. I really enjoy working with you. Um, who do you know, right? And then they, then they send out, um, they send out your offer to five to 10 people. And now you're in a position where, um, you probably have one of the best revenue months that you've had in a long time. Okay. All right. So, um, so that's your networking growth. Now, the next one I'm not going to go too deep into, but it is something that, depending on the type of business, um, depending on the type of business that it does um, work with, I'm not going to go deep into it because it's not, not something that I teach typically, and so it's not something that I do. Um, that's paid advertising. So, paid ads, um, I recommend if you 
Um, so the reason why I don't uh, push it as much is more so because you have to kind of understand. Um, yeah, you, you, you have to have to have all of these things, all of these things in place before you do payment, right? That's my only requirement. And once you have all of these things in place, it makes it a lot easier. Because if you don't have, let's say, for example, the website at the car, when someone you, you're paying for ads, someone clicks on your, your website, guess what? And it's not ready, guess what? You're gonna lose it. So you're what? You're losing money. So that's why I always tell people, um, you're gonna run ads, it's cool, run them, but make sure that these things are in place for you. Okay. Um, so that's all I'm gonna say about paid ads. All right. So um I'm going to open it up, guys, for Q&A. Anybody have a question, just um, shoot it out, and I'll, I'll answer. Um, and if not, we will going to cut it short. And, um, and while you guys are typing up questions or thinking any questions, um, so we talked about optimizing the website, uh, social media, leveraging social media to get leads, um, email marketing to continuously get leads, um, content marketing, networking, referrals, and then paid ads. Okay, so lease is number one. Um, then we had transactions, and we talk about we're going to talk about that next week. Um, transactions where you can now that you have your lease now, but put yourself in a position where you can get more out of the lease. So instead of selling this person one time, we can, we can um, do like a, a bulk or a bunch of order and sell multiple things. Um, then we talk about uh, conversions um, and then profit. Okay. All I have right. a question. You could stay right here. Mm -hmm. Um, this person wants to know what if they want to rebrand their entire business and their current business and audience has been loyal. How do they pivot to rebrand to rebrand with a completely different kind of business? So are you going to rebrand or they start to open the business? So it looks like it's an extension of what they were doing before. Um yeah. So let me, let me first explain a rebrand. Because a lot of times people, is this good? Like, uh, deputies? Yeah. See what I can Yeah. Good. All right. So um, I'm, I'm going to go over, I'm going to talk about branding a little bit. Um, and then uh, answer them. So, um, so branding is sometimes I think it's a buzzword. To be honest, you know, I, I think I don't always think people really understand like what, what a rebrand is. So, um, when you look at, um, let's say a brand package, you're gonna have in it, you're gonna have the logo, you're gonna have um, the fonts. You're going to have um, the color schemes. Um, tonality. Which is in your, in your um, branding package. Um, the target audience. Market research. Right. And much more. Right. This is off the whim, so I don't know. I, I don't know everything is actually in the brand package off the off the whim. Now, um, but here's the thing: when, when you're in the process to make that transition, if you're like say for example, you sell um uh cell phones, right? So you sell phones right now, and you're like, man, I'm trying to sell phones, I'm gonna sell iPads. Right? No, 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 I'm just uh, so I'm not going to sell phones anymore. I'm going to sell shoes. Okay. Now, so you're selling iPhones, now you're going to sell shoes, right? So you have a business, you have a website, you have all these things, right? And I'm going to say, okay, I want to do a rebrand. And, um, you know, my, my, my customer base has been loyal to me, but I want to go a different direction. So the first thing that you want to really understand is um, within the rebrand, um, you have a customer base now. Why do you want to? Why do you want to go here? Like, why do you want to sell here? 
Because if you're already here making sales, the hardest thing for you to do is to go here. And the reason why it's hard is because you have to say, so my audience, my audience, you have to X out your audience, get your audience, and then you have to start a new audience here, right? So typically, what I would recommend, if someone is interested in starting another uh, business or, or selling something else, I would say, being sure you have an audience for phones, now it's time for you to start doing what? Now let's do phone cases, right? Now let's do chargers, right? Now let's do... Um, uh, uh, little things put in the window on the holders, right? Because now, because what's happened is I already have an audience here, right? I have an audience that I haven't even gotten the most out of this audience yet, right? So instead of going somewhere else, how about we just get my audience to buy more? Right? So what we're, we're going to be talking about next week transactions is exactly that thing, right? We're going to be talking about how can we get more transactions out of what we already sell, opposed to going to different, different directions. So um, if that person does want to do a rebrand, they have to understand that essentially what's happening is they want they started a whole new business. Um, and it's not just the logo and the color scheme and what looks cute. What looks cute. Um, they're, they're really starting an entire entire new business. So that's okay, cool. But um, they're literally going to leave that audience unless it's an audience that matches. That's good. They said thank you. That makes sense. Any other questions? One question is about leads, but um, I think you covered it. What was the question? Um, just ways to generate new leads. Oh, <laughs> like our engine? Yeah, yeah, so just to generate new leads. They have the, they've been doing the same thing and need to figure out how to get more leads and more money. How to get more leads? Do you know what type of business it is? No, but it was, yeah, this is one that was submitted, so it's not when it's live. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, I mean, so, um, yeah, I mean, essentially I covered it, but uh, it, it looks like the direct question. I, I can go deep into the business to give, like, actual examples. Anything else? Hopefully, this is good stuff. Um, so, what we're going to be doing next week, um, anybody that's interested, um, just put in the chat or just let let Brittany know, and um, we'll, we'll we'll give you the information to join for next week. So this is a paid group, you know that, that we're in. Um, so if you're interested in joining, we can get you all the information how to join. Um, and we meet uh four I mean once a week, um, for about an hour. Um, and and then we go over information like this. We talk about uh you know how to grow. We have a group, a group chat where we talk you know we converse in um, on a daily if needed. You can always reach out to me any any questions that you have. So I always say you know if you have a business, um, it's almost like you know if, if you were in school, you can essentially teach yourself how to read, right? But having a teacher speeds that process up. So it's the same thing with having somebody you want to help grow. Um, so if you have a business, you want to have somebody that can help push you along the way. Okay. All right, cool. All right, guys. Um, good. All right, we're gonna shut it down here for you guys that are on Zoom. Thank you guys so much for hopping on. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Reach out on WhatsApp, um, and I'll be sure to answer those. Um, and if nothing else, good night.